I don't see a future where we massively disconnect. I see a future where we learn to connect with greater wisdom. Nu we altijd en overal online zijn en de digitale netwerken zich verder verdichten, zijn er steeds minder plekken waar je echt alleen kunt zijn. Offline wordt een luxe. Want waar kan dat straks nog? Hangen we levenslang aan het draadloze infuus van de smartphone? Of blijven we zelf de baas over onze connectiviteit? Tegenlicht gaat op reis met de speciaal voor deze uitzending ontwikkelde White Spots app. Die de onzichtbare netwerken zichtbaar maakt. De scanner laat zien waar om ons heen de zendmasten staan die met onze smartphones en tablets communiceren. Op de nieuwe wereldkaart zijn de plekken met mobiel bereik zwart. De witte plekken, de white spots, zijn nog zonder dekking. Met de app op zak gaan we op zoek naar de uitgang van het digitale web dat ons omspant. Psychologe Sherry Turkle beschreef ooit met groot enthousiasme hoe computers deel worden van ons gevoelsleven. Maar nu heeft ze ernstige bedenkingen. Op onze white spots wereldkaart wil ze meer plaatsen zonder internet creëren. I don't think there'll be places that will not be covered by the internet. Everything will be covered. Yeah, the entire planet. Yes, I think that uh, the sacred spaces are places that we create where we choose to not use connectivity. 89% of Americans say that in their last social interaction, they took out a phone. And 82% say that it deteriorated the conversation. So in America, we're at a kind of funny point where we're all the time doing something that we know is not really good for us. So I think we're at a point, a kind of tipping point, where there's the possibility for change. Welcome to the International Institute of Digital Detoxification. When you enter this area, we will take all of your digital technology, valuables, and anything else that doesn't quite fit in with the camp branding ethos. I think it's starting to be a movement. And I think you do see it when the most high-tech people want a low-tech education for their children. Steve Jobs didn't want his kids to have iPads or iPhones. No, he, he wanted them to have long conversations at dinner. And many, many Silicon Valley parents send their children to Waldorf schools, Montessori schools, schools where there's very little technology because the mandarins of this new society often put as their highest value um, the kind of conversation that this technology undermines. Bedrijven en overheden willen de hele wereld van draadloos internet voorzien. En dus wordt er druk geëxperimenteerd met drones, satellieten en luchtballonnen. Wat betekent het precies als dit masterplan voltooid wordt? Zijn we dan nooit meer alleen? Wat doet het met ons als de hele planeet verbonden is en iedereen altijd en overal bereikbaar zal zijn? We vragen het internetcriticus Yevgeny Morozov. The goal is 100% connectivity on a planetary scale. Is that going to happen? Well, I think it's quite likely. Uh, as long as you can have some expected return coming from an area of the world, um, it's quite logical to expect that there will be somebody interested in integrating it into the world market. I mean, for me, that's what it's all about, because it makes life easier for main players of globalization, which happen to be corporations. I think with Google, there is a concentrated effort, but also with Facebook. I mean, it's sort of many of the firms that now operate into what has been called surveillance capitalism, right? It's this idea that somehow by aggregating data, by analyzing it, you can maybe offer some services which are nominally free to the users, but nonetheless, you can monetize them because you're generating data that advertisers are interested in. So there are a lot of companies that are interested in that model. 
I mean, ultimately, I think we have to understand that this is the new developmental model, that the idea is that these companies will come and build a lot of services for you, connectivity being one of them, but health, education, transportation, and others are waiting also to be offered with those companies quickly taking over parts of the infrastructure that previously was offered differently. And ultimately, if you really want to go beyond the current model, you have to be asking very political and economic questions about things like data. Is data an asset? Can it be privately owned? Is it okay for a company like Google to collect my data while I'm using the service, then claim it as their own, and then basically derive all sorts of benefits, including financial benefits, from that data. Het IJslandse parlementslid en hacker Britta Jonsdottir kent de digitale netwerken van binnenuit en weet als geen ander hoe het voelt om permanent bespioneerd te worden. I know that I'm under heavy surveillance because of my involvement with uh, WikiLeaks and Snowden and there's nothing I can really do to stop it because it's so much. And what bothers me about that is that everybody who calls me is under surveillance. Everybody who writes to me is under surveillance. Our computers and phones have these cameras and these cameras can be turned on remotely and it's happened lots of times. So uh, there's a reason why a lot of activists uh, and people that are aware of this uh, are, have started a while ago to use uh, stickers that are specifically designed to put over the camera and then you can take it off if you want to go and, on Skype. They can also hear what you are because there's a microphone in the computer. Uh, and the same applies to even Barbie dolls and, um, and your television. And it's going to get into everything, all your devices. And so we're worried that hackers can get into our computers and take control over them. What if they can get control over your car, the computer in your car, uh, or the computer that monitors um, your heart? <laughs> if you think about all the stuff that you are in no control of putting into this massive database that's about you. That's dangerous. You know, now I work as a legislator and I have uh, specialized in the field of legislation that deals with these realities. And the fact of the matter is that um, no legislator in the world has been able to keep up with the rapid development. De technologie kruipt steeds verder onze huiskamers en de haarvaten van ons bestaan in, zegt Jons Dottier. Maar als de wetgever die digitale versnelling al niet bij kan houden, hoe kunnen wij er dan zelf greep op krijgen? De hechte gemeenschap van de Amish in de Verenigde Staten heeft al eeuwen ervaring met het zorgvuldig inpassen van nieuwe techniek. Deze fundamentalistische christenen laten nieuwigheden als auto's, telefoons of computers alleen mondjesmaat toe. Na rijp beraad. En op hun voorwaarden. With us Amish, we are dependent on public transportation for any distance. And on and local travel, we do it in our slow way. And I think the horse and buggy slows us down and really helps the overall value that we're trying to create and preserve. And not get carried away. Dominee Norman Joder wil ons wel te woord staan, maar hij wil absoluut niet in beeld. When technology comes along, we evaluate it. And one thing we it's it's really been frustrating to us. Let's say the facts, putting this print of paper through there and going through that line, you know, that it was like, well, we don't want to go there. But finally we adapted to that. So by the time most of the community adapted to that, that technology was already gone. They wanted email. So that's what we're dealing with. The technology is progressing so fast, it, it's hard to deal with. As a group, we see more and more. We have to teach what the moral impact is in being involved in this so each individual can make better choices for themselves. We were asked to put a cell phone tower on our land. They wanted to rent, but we never did it. The towers came was not for us, not for our people. It was for the other people. So it was here. And as more and more people adapted to it, 
uh, yeah, the demand was that you communicate that way was getting higher and higher. We deal with a lot of non-Amish. They demand instant communication. They need to know now. And we get wrapped up in that, you know. Now, dealing with internet, email, that is a serious issue. A regular computer with your safety walls, you know, where you can't get on porn sites and things like that. Now, when our lockdowns that we have, that is totally locked down. Can you go on the, on the internet with this computer? No, no, absolutely not. It will not play a movie picture or uh, music or anything like that. It's not a computer that was torn down. It was built from the ground up like this. Especially for Amish? Yes. Would you mind showing me your mobile phone? Okay, yes. We keep it actually right over here in the drawer. And it's just a regular flip phone. And, and the only thing you can do with that is call. You cannot text, do anything like that. It's just a portable phone. So this is where it stays. But uh, as far as going home, no, I don't have it. I keep it right here. That's for the business. We use technology as long as we use it and it doesn't get to the point where it uses us and controls us. That's the bottom line of it. De Amish willen zelf de regie houden en komen na onderling overleg tot strenge richtlijnen. Maar er is ook ruimte voor eigen interpretaties. Een paar huizen verderop woont naaister Marilyn Lehman. Na overleg met haar man wil ze wel even in beeld. Voor haar naaiatelier heeft zij een telefoon hard nodig. Do you have a phone? Uh, not in the house. We don't have a phone, but we have a phone outside. Uh, we call it our phone shan shanty. And uh, yeah, we just have a voicemail, so that's how people contact us. If we, um, if if they need something, they know they can leave a message. And usually, once an hour or so, I run out to check messages and then I reply them. So. Otherwise, yeah, we don't have the phone in the house. That way I can just continue with my work and I know the voicemail's there. If somebody does need something, they can always leave a message. It's right outside. Um, it's beside the barn. I only have like 50 feet or so to go. So yeah, I just really like it out there. Have you been online? No. Mm -mm. No, I wouldn't know how to get online. <laughs> so no, I've never been online. Are you curious about the internet? Um, I cannot even really say that I am. I mean, it's never crossed my mind because I guess we've had successful business now for 14 years without any computer access or internet access or, yeah, just me and my faithful old phone shack. <laughs> so. Google and Facebook are the new colonial powers? Uh, to some extent, uh, yes, uh, they are new colonial powers uh, because they operate very closely with the foreign agendas of the U.S. government. It clearly has a certain imperial uh, dimension to it. You're basically seeing huge extraction of value and huge extraction of uh, assets, intangible ones like data, which I think will be key to the functioning of those economies and to their ability to actually articulate the sovereign alternative to a world where otherwise they will end up completely integrated into a system where they cannot write the rules, they cannot sue the companies, and they just have to follow the dictate of corporations. In the last 20 years, the advancement of technology has probably put our guidelines more in a chaos than in ever in history. And it's a serious thing. Where is this leading? The technology that the computer and the internet is that basic technology is creating the availability to have a one world order and everything being done by paperless and all that. So the question to us is, when is that time going to be that we say, we're just not going to adapt? And I, I think what we're trying to do is a good example that could 
realistically be adapted in the whole world if we want to. Wilt u ook zelf de offline wereld verkennen? Download dan nu de gratis Widespots app. Kijk de lange aflevering op onze website. Of bekijk deze twee andere video's van Tegenlicht Kort. Iedere week op de hoogte blijven van Tegenlicht Kort, abonneer je dan op ons kanaal.